Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lesson four from lecture two and in this short lesson we're going to have a quick overview of HTML and the document object model. Now we looked at that in lectures on Thursday, yesterday, and um, we, we really didn't get to go into it in any great amount of detail. I'm hesitant to to, to be overly detailed with this because in truth you really need to know a lot of JavaScript in order to truly understand and engage with the DOM. But what's important at this stage is that you understand that for every HTML document uh, the browser creates this document object model and you know we have access and it also provides you with access to that model and that when we talk about access we're talking about a programming access and that's usually achieved by a JavaScript. But we can do an access and examine and look at the DOM in a more general way here before we actually know anything really about coding at all. Um, so um, the whole point to remember initially is that the DOM is a programming interface for HTML and also for XML documents. Okay, Your browser is capable of displaying XML too. It represents the page so the programs can change the document structure, style and content like actual content. So you might start off with a page that has particular content and then you might change that content depending on how the user engages with the page. So the DOM represents the document then as a set of nodes and objects. It's essentially a big tree of nodes and at those nodes there are objects. And it's got a hierarchical structure. And that means then we can traverse the tree and then um, access it using a programming language and that language is typically JavaScript. So when we talk about web pages, we really need to start referring to them as documents. And so the documents then, um, you can either look at it in the browser as it's rendering, like this render here, or you can look at it as a source. Now this particular application uses Markdown on the left and it uses a nice HTML as my rendering on the, on the right. So um, really what happens then, it's essentially the same representation. One is a view, so the steps are your browser gets the document from wherever it comes on the network, on a drive, um, and then it parses, it understands, and interprets that document and creates the DOM, okay, that interface, this tree. And then it uses that DOM to render it. So there's this there's this live, if you like, update between the rendering of text um, and the text as it happens. So let's say I change here in this document here, I change this section here on the document object model to models and you instantly see that the the text has changed here well let's maybe do it in the title it might be let's say we change it up here and we see it changes here so this is that live update so same thing is happening you know if you if you make changes to the model or to change to, to the DOM you get that reflected in the actual co the content that's displayed so um I'm using some notes for this from my favorite DOM references, and they are the Mozilla developer docs, which are brilliant, and the Google's developer docs. And I have links to those, and I'll give you those a little bit later as well. We can use our browser. This is the really important part. We can use our browser to examine the DOM that's been created from any HTML document that's been loaded into a window or a tab. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just, first of all, look at some simple examples of the DOM representations visually, so you get a sense of, of what it will look like and then we use Chrome's developer tools to examine the DOM in more detail and that will take a little bit of practice it can look a bit overwhelming at first but it's a really great skill to learn and it'll help you with your debugging too at some later stage so one thing I have to really bring to your attention is that it's very difficult to talk about the DOM and not refer to JavaScript or cascading style sheets and then we'll come to these in the next couple of weeks for sure but you have to remember that every element in a HTML document has a style, its presentation, even if you don't provide one. And we've seen some in some of the earlier lessons where we added a style attribute to some tags just to make it behave in the way we want it for, for learning purposes. But even if we don't provide, provide one, there is one there, okay? And these styles are usually inherited from the enclosing elements. And so one of the whole purposes of the DOM is to provide a, a programming interface to the elements in the document and we can change styles, we can play positions, we can change the content, we can remove them, we can add them, we can do all sorts of fun things. So we worked through a few examples in this, in this lesson and in the next lesson, in fact. Okay, let's go to Chrome. Okay, so here's my um, getting started and viewing, with viewing and changing the DOM from the Google source. It's really good. Um, the introduction to the DOM and the full details really um, comes from the Mozilla web docs 
Okay. Um, I'm going to look at a, a very simple example of a DOM tree. So, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm using this particular example from the JavaScript.info website. Okay. And um, here's a very simple document. Okay. It is a has a head section, has a body, and has a single element in here. So what happens when the browser loads this document? It creates a whole bunch of elements. So for example, it has the HTML element, it has the header element, it has the contents, which is the text here, okay? Um, and it has the title, which was about elk, and it's a title. Another text element, another text element, the body, and the content of that, which is text. So it's telling us a little bit about the element itself and the property of that element. So it's telling us that the head consists of some title and inside that we have some text. But where's this text come from? Well, that's because in the actual text that you can't see here, um, you know, there's a return, which is this little symbol here, and also some spaces. And it's representing everything. So you have all of those, um, um, all of those uh, elements in the document become nodes in the tree, and each tree node is an object. And it's nice to know this. So, you know, um, there are different kinds of ones. So you, here's, here's a, a different version of this that doesn't have any spaces. We had spaces up here. We had nice layout but we have a slightly different tree. But the, essentially, the, the bulk of it is, is, is pretty much the same. Um, here, for example, is a list element. And here is the list representation. Tables are interesting because we're, we know about tables. Here's a very simple table. Table, it has an ID. Now we're giving this table a name, so we could refer to it a little bit later. We notice it has a row and a single cell and it closes it. it. It's interesting to notice that when you when, when you generate the actual, uh, sorry, when the DOM software creates, um, or when the, your, your browser creates the DOM, it always includes this T-body element here, always in this T-body. So it, it appears from nowhere, but it's useful to know that that's how it works. Um, uh, when, you, you know, when you, well, well, not when you, but when your browser creates the various elements and you're trying to find that element when you're looking at the DOM structure. There are lots of other node types as well. You can see some nice examples of these here. So here's a comment, for example, um, and the comment also represents there as well. So um, it sits between the two nodes as well, but it's still just another node. So it's, it's good that we know and understand and have a look at those. So let's have a quick look and um, see if we can find another nice version. So here's a nice version of a, a complex. So here's a table, and this is the Go.js diagramming site, and it actually is giving a diagram of this particular page. Well, you know, we have the body section, the div section, the div sample, so we don't know what's happening here, but if we were to look at the source, and we can do that in a little while in the next lesson, we'd be able to see the actual structure of this. So what's really happening here is that the DOM is so interesting and complex that the DOM is, has such flexibility that it allows the page itself, using JavaScript, examine itself. Okay. So this page is able to examine its own structure and then display its current structure. In principle, we could change the structure dynamically if we have a programming interface, and then the change would be reflected in the, in this, in, in the, um, the document itself. So that's something we'll do in the next lesson. So it's, um, it's, a, it's nice to see and to, to get understand how it works. Okay? But you know, for now, you can take a simple page. Um, let's go to the introduction to the DOM page on the Mozilla web document, or will we go to we we'll go to the um, this one here? Okay. So here, if I look and right click on Michelangelo here, I can inspect that with my browser, and this opens up a developer to tools on the side. And what's happening is we're seeing the actual HTML source on the right-hand side here. I'm scrolling through it now. Um, I can actually see 
the node that I'm looking at, Michelangelo. I'm seeing all sorts of information about styles and stuff on the left. In fact, I can double click this Michelangelo and make it John. Click elsewhere. I'm after changing the content of this page using my browser. What I've actually done is I have used the console which is utilizing the DOM representation of this document and I'm going and I have manipulated a very specific list element in the document in here and changed the inner HTML components. Very, very powerful. The DOM is, uh, DOM is really useful. And I hope it gives you some sense of that. I, if I can do it manually, then I can write JavaScript and do it a little bit more um, programmatically. Okay, we'll see more of that in the next lesson. But for now, we leave it there. Thank you very much for watching.